My name is John Spencer Ellis, and I'm the Entrepreneur Coach. When did you realize that this is what you wanted to do? The first time I realized that business and entrepreneurship and personal development would be my calling, probably the first time, was uh, watching a Tony Robbins infomercial late at night, um, 25, 30 years ago, heck, maybe more. Uh, so that always interested me. And then early on, uh, you know, watching what Sir Richard Branson was doing. And then my dad was uh, an entrepreneur as well, and he influenced me quite a bit. Who influenced you most in your life? My dad definitely influenced me because he always had an entrepreneurial spirit. And he always emphasized to me that you're only limited by your willingness to work and your imagination. So my dad definitely was a big influence. And then just seeing anyone overcome adversity or some personal, professional, financial, emotional challenge and then rise above that, that was always an inspiration to me. And there's probably been hundreds, countless people who have inspired me like that. Tell me about your early days and what was it like getting started? I think I had a defining moment when I was in high school. I, I was always intrigued by all this personal development and striving for more and achieving more. And uh, I, I was fascinated by Olympic powerlifters and just the Olympics in general, but then big businesses and big buildings and all these different things. It always inspired me. But I remember one thing in high school, and then looking back on it now, it's fascinating. In the senior yearbook, they had you write basically a note to yourself what you thought you would be doing 10 years in the future or with the rest of your life. And, uh, and I said certain things at that time and then looking back on it now, I'm doing those things that I said I would do when we wrote it in the senior year, uh, yearbook, which was probably you know, a third of the way through the senior year. So it's pretty interesting to see how when you make a declaration like that, how it can actually come true. How do you motivate yourself and inspire yourself? I think motivation is actually overrated. I, I guess I do motivate myself or inspire myself, but it, you know, it comes from the outside, but right now we're talking about like internal motivation, internal inspiration. I, I will, on a daily basis, have a short pep talk with myself, as crazy as that sounds. Before I begin a particular task, before I do anything, I will literally say, to myself under uh, un, uh, subconsciously or quietly or sometimes aloud focus pay attention this is what we need to do and we as if it's a team right me myself and i yeah. uh and that seems to help as crazy as that sounds i literally will say things aloud and to myself quietly pay attention focus this is important avoid distractions Remember the highest use and best use of your time. And then over the course of the day, you can stray. It's understandable. And if you do, you just say those things to yourself or aloud until you get the desired result and action. What hardships in your past have you overcome and how did you overcome them? I've had some hardships and you know, it's, it's always a matter of degree because definitely I've had a good life, a great life. I've been very fortunate. And there are people who have gone through far more than I have. I'm well aware of that. I would say my personal challenges or things I've overcome is uh, one, growing up being uh, dyslexic and having severe reading challenges. Uh, when I was in sixth grade, I was reading about a third grade level. And um, so being dyslexic and ADD, ADHD, you know, which is, is pretty stereotypical for many successful entrepreneurs. So sometimes it can be a, a blessing or a curse. It depends how you look at it. Um, so, so that was, you know, in sixth grade, I was reading at a third grade level. And then in high school, I was so distracted by the different things I wanted to do and go be and accomplish and experience that I, and with the reading challenges I had, I didn't realize that I was really falling behind in my grades. And I was also on the must pass list, which means if I failed even one course, I would not graduate high school. Uh, so I turned that around as a direct result of that. The next uh, quarter or semester, I was on the principal's list for having you know, a good enough grade to do so. 
So what kind of dedication has it taken to become who you are today? Dedication is critical. Critical. I think in, in dedication to me is persistence and consistency over time. I, you know, if, I'm sure Webster's has a different definition, uh, but when you're dedicated, it's not what you do, it's who you are. It's like when someone says, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I'm going to try this or that. It's something that's external or possibly temporary. But if you make a declaration and say, I am this person, and because I am this person, I will take these actions, I will do these things, I will become this better version of myself in the future, even tomorrow. So dedication is persistence and consistence over time, and then embodying what that is into who you are, not just who, what you do. So tell me what was it like during the early years of you discovering entrepreneurship? My early years of discovering personal development and entrepreneurship actually did go hand in hand. Uh, like, like most people that after they discover something like that, they think they know a lot more than they do and then they pontificate about different things and they do a lot of preaching to people, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but it happens. And, I, and, and the reason for that is a good reason, it's just that people are excited. You wanna help people. You know, um, if you found something really cool in life, you wanna share it to people or with people. And, and I think that is one of the challenges is when you are new to anything great like that, personal development, business, different strategies, um, health and wellness, stuff like that, you're thinking, this is working for me and I would like to serve and help other people. But there's a time and a place for that. And you also need to make sure that you have enough foundational knowledge and it's appropriately timed before you share it with people. So what is it like to be a leader in your industry? I hope that I'm perceived as a leader in my industry. I know that there are people who know far more than I do. And each thing that I'm good at, there is someone who's great. And, I, and I'm well aware of that. I think what allows me to be a leader in my industry, uh, which is basically combining the success mindset with entrepreneurship, is that my approach is, is very pragmatic. And it's also, uh, I have a lot of education to back it up, but also a lot of personal experience. Um, and I always emphasize the people's personal goals, values, ambitions, support system, and things like that in, the, in their use of the strategies I teach. That's really important. You don't want to just say, it worked for me just like this, do this. Everyone's a little bit different. So it's important to take all that into account. But being a leader, is also to make other people leaders as well. It's not always just to get more people to follow you. So what piece of advice would you give to someone that has ambition to do what you're doing? If someone has ambition to do what I'm doing, I would suggest that you start early, as early as possible. Uh, that what's the saying go? Uh, the best time was 10 years ago and the next best time is right now something to that effect. So start early, be consistent, and whenever possible, make sure that the people who are your, you are learning from share your core values, your ethics, your morals, your standards. Because if they don't, and they're substandard from where you feel that your morals and standards and ethics are, the way that they teach things to you will not resonate with you at the right point or frequency, however you want to say it, um, but also how you then reiterate what you're learning from someone else may not be congruent with your core values. And that doesn't feel very good. So what makes you happy? What gets you excited? And what brings you joy? What gets me happy, excited, and fills me with joy are just a few simple things. Uh, one is having a good life at home. I'm fortunate enough to have an awesome wife who's pretty and smart and supportive and successful. So uh, 
I married a unicorn, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, and then I love spending time with her and my two French Bulldogs, Lily and Lucy, and uh, being physically active. Every day I have to do something, something I have to do physically active, and it varies from, from day to day. Uh, and then having a series of peak experiences which add value to my life and contribute to me being a better version of myself than I was the day before. What is your purpose in life? You know, I know it's, it's funny when people say, you know, what is your purpose? What is my purpose? What is the purpose of, of life in general? Man, that is very subjective. It's very hard to understand. Some people feel they have a spiritual calling. Some people feel it at a cellular level. And some people feel they never find out what it is. For me, it's constantly evolving, but there are some true or core competencies or core components that have never changed. And that is that I always want to be in the service of other people. If I have to do something that compromises my ethics, my morals, my standards, uh, I can't do it. I would just feel icky and I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. Uh, but as long as as long as you hold everything true, then um, you'll do all right. Don't compromise. So was there a favorite quote or saying that you have that you always revert back to? There is a quote, and I don't remember the gentleman's name. Uh, he is a biologist. And the quote is that if our brains were so simple that we could understand them, then we would be so simple that we could not. <laughs> And so basically what that means is when someone says, oh, we only use 10% of our brain and this and that. Well, you'd also have to believe that if we learn 90% more, we're done learning, which isn't true. Uh, we use an infinitesimally small portion of our brain. And the more we use it, the more it expands. It's kind of like the universe. It's, it's fascinating. Any, any quote or anything to do with uh, learning how to learn and becoming a better version of ourselves than we were the day before. Anything revolving around that is always interesting to me and those types of quotes are what compels me to learn more. What are the last three books that you've read? The last three books that I've read are uh, The One Thing. And don't ask me all the authors of these because darn it, I can't remember all of them. So The, the, the One Thing uh, is a great book focusing on that one thing that really matters. Um, there is also, it's not the last book I read, but it's really, really important to me is The Answer by John Asaraf. Great guy, good friend. And then also an, I, another book I recently reread because it's so important to me and really changed my mind about a lot of things is Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harvecker. And the one thing I remember in his book that is so important for everybody is to love and embrace what you want or what you want to become. And, and, and even if someone else has it, rather than having hatred or frustration or jealousy, admire that, what they've done, admire that person for the accomplishment, and then reverse engineer it and figure out how you can do it for yourself according to your plan. So how do you want to be remembered or known? How do I want to be remembered or known? Gosh, that means I'm in the second half of my life, if you're asking a question like that. Um, <laughs> darn you. You know, I, I, I've made a lot of impact in different markets and different industries, and I've created hundreds of thousands of jobs, and I've helped develop industries globally. And that's been great because I've been able to see other people live better lives because of things that started here. That's super cool. That's a lot of fun. I think if I can be remembered as someone who cared about others, who made an impact and inspired people to become a better version of themselves, then I think that's good enough. I'm John Spencer Ellis, and this is my story.